again everybody, Paul here in the Rojobi Music Workshop. Okay, so uh, this is an update on uh, the Mountain Dulcimer project, which I'd spoken about in previous videos. And in my last couple of videos, I've said that the, the project uh, is temporarily on hold. Um, because we're now reopened again, to potential uh, customers and and, um, and students. Uh, obviously, I was no longer able to use the classroom as my workshop. But I was get I was getting itchy feet and I was getting uh, impatient. So, little confession: I've actually made a start on this new dulcimer project. Uh, I made a start yesterday. Um, Saturday, hey, sorry, Sunday. I lose track of what what day of the week it is, what my name is, where I am, everything. Um, so my intention was um, just to cut out or rough cut uh, the wood that I was going to need for the project to actually build the instrument. Uh, but truth be told, I got carried away and I just uh, continued working on it. Um, I haven't done a great deal, but I have done considerably more than I intended to. As I said, all I was going to do <coughs> was just rough cut out the wood that I was going to need to build the instrument. Okay, so let me show you uh, what I've got. So as I said, this instrument is called a mountain dulcimer. Now, some of you uh, may know what a mountain dulcimer is. Some of you may not. Um, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't bothered to, uh, you know, to try to upload um, photographs or diagrams or anything on these videos because I'm not very good at editing and I, I can't be bothered to mess around with it. Um, as I said, I'm sure some of you know what a mountain dulcimer is. Those of you that don't, you, you know, you can easily Google it. Mountain dulcimer or lap dulcimer. Um, actually, before I show you, I'll give you a little bit of a brief history of, of this instrument. Um, so they've been around for probably probably a couple of hundred years. Um, they're reputed to have originated from Scotland, uh, of all places. So when the, um, when the migrants uh, settled in America, uh, in the Appalachian Mountain region, they brought... Um, an instrument with them which was uh, similar to the what's known as the mountain dulcimer <coughs> and that is apparently its origin so it's it's um, it's it's an instrument uh, which had its roots if you like in in uh, Scotland and northern England but um, that when when the migrants settled in the Appalachian mountain regions in the US I'm not sure what part of America I'm not too good with the American geography, um, that's basically where the, the instrument started to become well known. And uh, obviously the Appalachian Mountains, Mountain Dulcimer. But it's an instrument that you, you don't hold and play like, like these kinds of instruments, you don't hold it up and play. You rest it on your lap, hence the other name, Lap Dulcimer. Okay, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. That's that's the basis of it. So um, the the um, the most common shape is kind of an hourglass shape. So it's it bows out, and you've got a waist, and then it bows out a little bit further and down. And it, it's it's quite a long instrument, um, about uh, 25 to 30 inches, maybe a little bit more, um, which is uh, I can't I can't remember. Uh, about 70 centimeters ish there or thereabouts so uh, so as I said the most common shape is is what's known as an hourglass shape there's also a teardrop shape which which uh, is, is a long teardrop so it comes out and then goes back in towards the bottom there are other shapes as well I've kind of gone with the um, traditional shape kind of um, because the, the traditional shape, as I said, is the hourglass, so the sides are curved, so they curve outwards, curve in, curve outwards, and then in again. Now, 
to do that, I would need um, a, some specialist equipment. Um, it's, it's wood bending apparatus, which I don't have. Um, and uh, so what I've done is I've kind of gone with the shape, but more kind of angular. Okay, so this is the this is going to be the back of the instrument. So put my glasses on. Uh, so you can see uh, it is rough cut, but you, you can see the, the outline of uh, exactly where it is going to be, and I've got center lines and all kinds of things marked out. Now, uh, this was originally going to be the top. Um, but I'm not sure how well you can see that. It is plywood, uh, but it is it's good quality plywood. Um, to be honest, I make a lot of my builds from plywood. This this you know good quality. But this is probably four and a half to five mil thick, uh, which is a, about a quarter of an inch there or thereabouts. So it's very thick. So this originally was going to be the top, but because of its thickness. Uh, it's, it doesn't resonate, it, it doesn't, you don't get the vibration, so the sound wouldn't be too good. So this is now going to be the back, okay, this is going to be the back. Now this is the top, which originally was going to be the back, so I've swapped them around. So a much prettier wood to start with, you can see it's got a huge knot in the middle, but it, it's, it's flat, there's no, and also, it doesn't go right through because this is also plywood, but it's a very, very unusual plywood. I've never quite come across something like this before. And, and it, this, this is relatively expensive. Um, <coughs> now this is thinner. It's only about three and a half millimeters thick, there or thereabouts. Um, and again, it, it's good quality, but you can see uh, it's got a really nice grain pattern. So this is this is going to be the for me the top surface. It's got a really nice grain pattern, which looks like natural wood. And obviously, this layer is well, it, it all is. You know, it's, uh, plywood is made from natural wood. It's just very very thin uh, sheets of it glued together with the the grain going in perpendicular uh, directions for each layer. Which, which is what gives you the strength. So the back side of it is still quite quite uh, patterned, but, but nowhere near as much. <coughs> so, as I said, this was going to be the back, but now it's going to be the top. This was going to be the top, and now it's going to be the back. So, uh, what I was saying about the, the resonance, uh, so this, uh, this piece is almost five millimeters thick, and the way you test uh, a wood's resonance is you hold it as lightly as you can between thumb and forefinger. So you're just gripping it enough so it doesn't slip out of your hand. And then tap and listen. So that resonates for about three seconds, which, is, which isn't ideal for the top. Now this one, much lighter so it's easier to hold as well. Okay, so that resonates for five or six seconds, which is much better. So that's going to be a much better wood for the top. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so that's the top, that's the back, and because this, this is it's quite thick, so it's going to give lots of strength. But also, the, I mean, the, the purpose of the back of an instrument is to, is to, is to um, rebound the sound. So you get the vibration from the top of the instrument, the sound goes in rebounds off the back of the instrument and comes out through the sound hole. So the back needs to be uh, fairly rigid. Um, okay, so these are uh, the sides. So as you can see um, from this portion, all the markings I've got. So because it's angular and I've got no way of bending, bending wood, and even if I did, this is plywood, so that wouldn't work, it would just split. So um, I've got all the side pieces made up. So there's eight of them all together. And um, 
so they're, they're all cut to size and they, they've got the sizes uh, written on them as well various uh, sizes so there's there's eight of those okay one two three four five six seven eight and the two end blocks okay so made from the same kind of ply for the end piece with a thick chunk of wood on the inside so these these are for the end blocks okay so these will go at each end of the instrument so these are for the strength and to, basically to these are the uh, keys keystone to hold everything together so they will go at the end there one at each end so there's two of those okay and um, also on these sides uh, so I was just going to cut out the wood. So what I have done is I've actually started to attach. Uh, well, I've, I've attached all of the curfling to uh, curfling to one side of the wood. Now the the reason for that is that when you glue it on here, you've got a decent glue surface. So then when you you attach it on here, you've got a decent glue surface, and it and it, it gives it strength and rigidity. Otherwise it you know, potentially it could all flap about and fall apart. So I've done uh, all of the sides. They've all got the, this already glued in place down one edge. Uh, so ready to, to put all that together. So you see, like I said, I got a bit carried away and I started doing some extra work. I was just going to cut the sides and then I decided to cut, cut all this and start sticking that on as well. So I've done that to all of the sides on one edge only just on one edge for now and I've, I've glued the end blocks onto the outside piece of wood that's not always the way you do it this way I'm doing this so this what is called uh, cur curfling or curfing I can't remember exactly which um, I've actually I've cut it out of some bigger pieces of wood so I've got plenty more of that um, including some off cuts uh, for when I need to do the other edge of it to put the top on the instrument. Now, as far as strengthening in in uh, the corners, uh, so particularly on the inside corners, normally you would have um, a brace going this way, where where you've got the join uh, to strengthen it. Now, what you can normally use is something like this, just basically square stock. It's probably a little bit big, actually, this one. Um, or you can use something like this one. This, this, this is uh, kind of coving type stuff, type wood. So you, you could use something like that. Now both of these uh, obviously have right angled corners. 90 degree corners. Which this doesn't. Uh, so I've actually marked on there uh, 45 degrees. 30 degrees, 35 degrees. So none, none of those, none of those are 90 degree corners. So these ain't gonna work. So what I've done is I've cut some pieces of doweling. Uh, this is about uh, 14, I think it's 14 or 15 mil or 9 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. So it's quite chunky dowling. So I've cut some pieces of this, this, which is the same height as, as, the, as the sides, okay? So my plan is to uh, cut some flats along two sides of, of this dowling so that it will fit into these corners, okay? And then with the flat, with the flats on this side, okay, they will go against the inside of the the side pieces there. So cut some flats on there, and they will they will stick on the inside. So that will give some really good strength. Um, and I mean, I, I could I could try and cut them out out of square pieces like this, but I actually think it will be easier to cut them out of the dowling, and also. Just nicer. I, I like using uh, doweling for many kinds of things. Um, 
you know, it looks nicer, it feels nicer. It's, and I, I actually find it easier to work with. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut one flat along one edge and then measure the angle and cut another flat here so that they fit, so that that fits inside the two, two sides that go together on an angle like this, uh, giving it plenty of strength and it will look good as well. And uh, so what about the waist here? Now I could, I could cut basically a V out of the dowling there, which I might, I might well do, I'm not sure yet. So I will see how that goes. Uh, okay, now the other, uh, the other part I've got is, quite important, the fret fretboard or neck. Okay, so I've, this very, again, very rough cut at the moment. Um, I have started to smooth this side, which is going to be the, the fretboard. So on these dulcimers, the, the fretboard goes the entire length of the body and you don't have a, a neck like you do on these kinds of instruments. Uh, the fretboard goes over the entire body. <coughs> and one other thing I've also done is I have cut out a scroll head. Again, still very rough cut. Um, still need to do a lot of work to that but I, so what I did was was I printed off a template on some sticker paper uh, stuck it onto the side and and used my bandsaw to cut out this shape so you know I could have gone with a traditional type oh sorry a standard type headstock which is if you look on that one there which has the same kind of headstock as uh, a guitar where it's just a flat and it is still angled back but it's just a flat you know rectangular piece of wood didn't want to go with that wanted to go with something a bit more flash so that's what I'm going with a scrolled headstock uh, and obviously I'm gonna you know cut cut a slot in here and then the, the tuning pegs will go through now my plan for this instrument is to hand make all of it, the whole thing. So you can see I've already started with the, the body and the, the fretboard and the headstock. It's all gonna be handmade. <coughs> the only factory made components I'm going to be fitting to this instrument are the strings and the frets. Uh, obviously, the, you know, they're, they're, I mean, I've still got to cut the frets and shape them and everything else. Uh, so the only, Factory made components I'm going to be using are strings and uh, frets. All the rest, the, re the rest of the entire instrument, I am going to make by hand. So that's the body, the fretboard, the headstock, the bridge, the nut, and even the tuning pegs. I've got some ideas in my head about how I want to make the tuning pegs. So they're going to be friction uh, friction style tuning pegs, like, like on a, um, a violin or anything in the violin family uh, and also on that instrument just there which is called a sanshin Japanese instrument so you see the the two pegs this side and that one that side those are friction pegs so they're, they're tapered they go into a hole and you just push them in and they're, they're held, held in by uh, friction so as I said much the same as, as uh, violins and, and, and that type of instrument um, I could go with uh, classical guitar style tuners, which is what a lot of these instruments are, are fitted with, but no, I want to make them. I want to make them by hand, so they'll be completely unique. This instrument's going to be unique anyway, as are pretty much most of the instruments I make. Um, so, I want, like I said, I want to make as much of it as possible by hand. Okay, so the next step for this now is to, uh, is to start to attach all, the, all of the, the sides and the end piece so that you've got the back and, and the sides. That's the next step. Um, now, I'm, I've decided not, I'm not going to do that bit on, on camera because I've already did, done quite a lot of the work off camera as it is. Um, I mean, all of this, you know, getting the wood cut and, and measured and everything else is, 
It's very long and laborious and boring. It's not really very interesting to watch me uh, cutting pieces of wood. Um, and the, the, the next step for to attach all of these sides to the back, um, it, there's going to be a lot of uh, fine measuring and cutting and gluing and swearing. So, you know, it's, it's not going to be all that interesting for you to watch. So I'm going to do majority of it off camera, put all the sides together and then, um, you know, do all the shaping and the strengthening and everything. It's just, it's not going to be interesting to watch. And, you know, I'm going to be cussing a lot because I'm going to make a few mistakes. Um, so, you know, I, I will possibly film little bits and pieces of it, but I just want to crack on with that so that I've got that part of it done. Because it's very long and tedious and, and time consuming and boring and frustrating and like I said it's not all that interesting to watch. It could be several hours of work to, to do that because from experience you know this, this can be very the, one of the most difficult parts of the build to get it all lined up and you know going together properly. Okay, so uh, I've rambled on for long enough now, 20 plus minutes. Um, so once again if you enjoyed this video, please give a like, um, share, comment, um, and if you haven't already, please uh, um, subscribe, so I couldn't remember the word, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell because there will be several more videos on this project and other projects as well. Okay, in the meantime, you all take care, uh, try and stay safe, peace. Out.